In the first part, we've discussed the importance of interactions and capturing interactions properly, but we didn't answer this question that it looks reasonable to think that higher IQ is related to Finnish high school. So the difference between this example and the ones in the previous video is that here the, the mom's IQ is a quantitative variable and the question mom Finnish high school is a factor, is a qualitative variable. So how can we deal with that? So first let's take a look at what, what happens when we don't have any interaction. So imagine that x2 is a factor and as you can see here this linear regression means that basically we have this straight line for x1 and we are changing the intercept. So the intercept is beta 0 in the case of uh, x2 equals 0 and, and the intercept is beta 0 plus beta 2 in the case in which we have this factor equals 1. But when we introduce interaction, basically what we are doing is changing slightly also the slope. And you can understand this again, grouping terms in x1, you can see that beta 0 tilde can be defined in this way. So basically this is the same as before, but now we also have a slope dependent x2. And uh, the larger x2 is increasing by the factor beta 3. Okay? So what does it mean interaction between categorical and quantitative variables? That means that for each group we have a different intercept and a different slope. What if we have more than two levels? Remember this video that we discussed that we cannot consider that this factor is a quantitative number with three levels. So we have to create dummy variables and we discussed that otherwise you're going to do this compromise solution that is misleading because th there is no meaning of calling this zero and this one or maybe calling this one and this two or whatever. Okay, so this is absolutely wrong. So let's take a look at what happens in this example if we have interaction. So let's create again some mock data in order to have some control of the predictions. And I'm going to create this function. You can take a look at this. So this means that only for value for cut for factors uh, x2 larger than zero, meaning two and one, we are increasing the, the slope and also the intercept. And I'm going to include in the data set uh, this x2n, which is basically this, this uh, variable, which is a number and x2 is the proper way in to introduce this factor, which is as factor, okay? So let's take a look at the data. You can see that for, for group zero, we have a different intercept and a different slope. And for groups one and two, we have this overlapping because basically we are using the same function, okay? So the super wrong model would be to consider that x2 is a real number or an integer number and do a linear regression. So here we're missing interactions and we're missing this factorial characteristics of the data. So let's take a look at the plot. Okay, everything looks fine if we just take a look at these uh, significance levels. But of course, you can see that we are not capturing at all the values of the coefficients. Okay, of course, the good thing of doing a, a, a miserable regression is that we have some criteria to decide. And you can see here that the residuals are terrible. So we are not capturing at all the shape of this function. Okay, let's try to do things a little bit better. So now we're going to include this x2, which is a categorical variable. Remember, this has three levels, but R is pretty smart and it's creating automatically this dummy variable. So from three levels, we, we shift to two binary factors. The coefficients are not yet correct, and that's, that's absolutely ex uh, ex expected because we are not including this interaction. And that's why instead of having 10 to 3, we have something like 8, 5, and something in the middle. Okay. The other thing that we can look at, the, at the, comparing the real data with the fit is that we are overestimating noise. And the reason why is that we are not capturing this part here. Okay. Let's take a look at this plot. Uh, still, we have a poor uh, regression. And the reason why is because we are not including interaction. We are not capturing the shape of the residual. So, so far, so good. We still have our eyes to, to detect when things are not working properly. So the final step, what if we include the interaction between the variables? Remember, now we have these dummy variables and R is including uh, two new interaction terms. So the first dummy variable times x1 and the second dummy variable times x1. And you can see that we still have significant coefficients. The coefficients now are properly captured. As you can see, this should be five and it's around five. This should be three and it's around three and so on and so forth. Now the residual error is more or less comparable to, to the real error. So this is 0.2 and this is 0.2. And if you take a look at the residuals, things are working smoothly. So remember, be careful with factors with more than two levels and always check the residuals to capture interactions. So let's go back to the first examples. Uh, what happens if we make an interaction between mom high school and mom IQ? 
and you can see that you obtain these parameters so all of them are significant regression is slightly better than regression alone but the interesting thing is this minus sign so this minus sign means that there is an effect in in in, in the mother having finished high school but the height the highlight could be something like that so kids with mothers with higher IQ perform better, but the effect is larger if the mother didn't finish high school. So graphically, you can see this. So the, the intercept increases with mother finishing high school, but the slope is decreased. So in the end, the, the mother IQ is more important than having finished high school. And we'll take, let's take a look at the recitals. And this looks pretty smooth. Uh, there are some discrepancy at the at the end, so you can see that this is not normal at the end. But this red line is almost horizontal, so I, I would be happy with this sort of regression. A final comment, and this is more philosophical than anything else. So if you take a look at this number, this is 22%, and you could say, okay, 22% is pretty low, so the model is really bad. But maybe it's not the model, maybe it's reality. So I think it, it's a good news, actually, that, that the kids' score is not completely deterministic on, on the mother's outcome. So there is some freedom there, right?